What's up guys, my name is Joe McGovern and this is JM Cad. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel if you're coming back for more. I really appreciate if you guys could leave a comment and tell me where you're from. I go through all my comments and I'd love to put you up on my board. This board signifies to me as a teacher that I am teaching people across the world, which is super rewarding. So let's not waste any more time, let's get into it. All right, ladies and gents, welcome back. This is part three of Rollerball. We are going to get our player moving. Here we go. All right, so we left off in our script here by adding the input system as a namespace in our C Sharp script. Without adding this namespace to the top, our C Sharp script would not understand our function, which we're going to use called on move, which basically means when the ball moves, we're going to gather some of that information and store it in different variables. The on move function is so that the C Sharp script understands when we input on the keyboard ASDW from different movements of the player. The first thing we need to do is create a function declaration, which is going to tell the computer to create a function. So here we go. Under void start, we're going to add our function and we're going to write, but make sure it's before the last curly brace. So throw two enters in there and write void on move. Make sure that this is all uh, capitalized. If it needs to be capitalized, it's very case sensitive. And then an open parenthesis, which is automatically going to populate a closed parenthesis. You can then hit enter, do an open curly brace, which is shift bracket, which is next to the P key. And you'll see you also get a closed curly bracket, hit an enter there, and you'll get a space in between them, which is going to be our function body. So in this area is where we're going to tell the computer what to do. And just so you know, void means that it's not going to return any data. So within the parentheses, we're going to add input value space movement value. Movement is not capitalized. So movement value is the variable where we're going to store data and input value is the type of variable because we're trying to capture in the function body the different movements of the sphere, which is going to be in two directions, left and right and forward and backward. So as we type on the keyboard, movement value is going to store the X, Y value. So basically we're going back to your math class. Movement value is going to store the data in X comma Y, which if you remember back to that class would be zero comma zero is the origin. It's like plotting points on a graph. If you were going to move up, then it would be in the Y direction. If you were going to move left to right, it would either be positive X or negative X. So now in the function body, we're going to use a function called get to get the information of the sphere, basically where the location is and what forces we're adding to it as we input on the keyboard. This data will be stored in what's called a vector to variable. All right. So in this function body, you're going to type vector to movement vector equals movement value dot get left arrow vector to right arrow open and close parentheses and then a semicolon. Now you might be wondering, well, why are we typing things like this? Why is there a semicolon? Why is there an open and closed parenthesis? This is just the format of C sharp coding language. This code takes or gets the vector two data from the movement value and stores it in a variable that you are calling movement vector. So what the heck does that mean? When the ball moves, we want to take the input value ASDW and call that movement movement value. That's just the name that were designated for those movements. Vector two is your X comma Y and we're getting that vector two data and storing it in a different variable called movement vector. So this line is basically saying the position of the ball equals or is the value that we're getting from the input value on the keyboard. It is two comma two because we held down the D key and we held down the W key and moved the sphere to that position. Now we need to tap into the rigid body that we put on the sphere to get the physics information from the sphere itself. So yes, we are getting the data, but where are we getting it from? We have to get it from the rigid body that we put on the sphere. So in order to get it from the rigid body, we have to have our script understand or tap into that information of the rigid body. 
So now we need to create another variable. Yes, there are a lot of variables or a lot of functions. OK, we need to create another variable called rigid body because we can't just type rigid body in our script without it knowing what is rigid body. So above the void start, you're going to hit enter twice and you're going to put private rigid body RB semicolon. So what does that mean? Well, private means that we don't need to access rigid body from any of the other scripts. If it said public, then that would mean that we could call back to it in a different script. But private means that we don't need to use it in another script and we don't need to access it in the inspector panel of Unity. An example of where you would need to access it in the inspector of Unity would be like the speed of the ball. Rather than coming back to the script each time and changing the speed to our liking in the Unity inspector panel, you could just see it says speed and then we can change that number to be whatever value we'd like for how fast we would like the sphere or ball to move. Rigid body is an understood word, but we want to say, hey, every time we type RB, we're talking about rigid body. This could say anything. It could say cheeseburger. And every time you type cheeseburger, it would understand that means rigid body. So we're abbreviating it so that it's something simple. So yes, every time we type RB, that means rigid body, but we need to say, well, what is rigid body? Where are we getting that data from? So in the start function now, we're going to define what rigid body is or what RB is. RB is get component, get the information from the rigid body that's on the sphere. We need to get the information from the rigid body that's on the sphere in order for our script to understand what is RB. And we're putting it in the start function that way before the game even starts or on the very first frame of the game, we're defining what RB is. That way the rest of our script will understand RB is this. And every time we refer back to it, that's what we're talking about. So now underneath the void on move, we're going to hit enter twice and we're going to do a void fixed update, open parenthesis, and then you should get your open and close curly braces. And again, void means that it's not returning any value. It's just going to perform a task, something that it's just doing in the background. So the difference between update and fixed update, they're both called on every frame of the game, but fixed update has to do specifically with physics. So guys, do yourself a big favor here and save your work because if something happens, you'd have to go back and type all this stuff again. Control shift S is going to save all. We still can't run the game. We've got more to go, but in the middle here, while I have your attention, if you guys could subscribe to the channel, if you want to see the other videos in this playlist, you guys can like the video if it's something that you're actually enjoying and you can turn on the bell if you guys want to see future notifications. I would really appreciate that. OK, this is where we're going to add force to the sphere. It's going to make everything work and it needs to check for this every frame, because if it didn't check every frame and you go to hit a key, it it's not going to register that movement unless it's every frame of the game constantly, always every second. All right, guys, this was part three. Stay tuned for part four coming out soon. See you later.